indeed so much to say about Somalia apart from guns and war and catch Alex Chamada tomorrow as he continues with that report. And now to the governor's seat with me in studio is Embu County Governor Martin Wambora. Uh, thank you very much for finding time to be with us in studio. Of course, uh, the governor with us in studio, uh, former chairman Kenya Airports Authority, as well as uh, the former MP for Runyanges, but now Governor Embu County. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you, Rita. And let's get right to it and begin with the present and what's currently happening. Yes. Uh, your county faces risk of a financial crisis. Uh, the local assembly currently striking. They had not passed the finance bill. What does this mean now for the county? It's uh, really, and this is not unique to Ebo County because the financial bill was supposed to have been passed uh, by last Monday uh, for all the counties. And um, we understand we, we are still likely to, to have an op another opportunity on 17th of this month. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are not overly very worried about it. Right, but without the bill, your county cannot collect any revenue. Is that correct? We may not be able to collect any revenue, uh, but uh, uh, we, 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 are, we are very hopeful. I'm very confident that uh, my county representative, the county assembly of Embu, mm -hmm. will be in time to pass this financial bill by 17th of this month. Mm -hmm. And Hopefully. let's talk about the health sector, and, and this is coming from questions that we're getting. Yes, um, yes. Health services in the county, concerns over Embu Provincial Hospital, too many referrals apparently to Kenyatta National Hospital, right. and indeed just concerns over health services across the county. What plans do you have underway to address this? Because the potential of Embu Provincial Hospital has been highlighted as great. Absolutely, very great potential for Embu County. In fact, we are calling ourselves the land of opportunities. And uh, Embu Provincial Hospital will not be left behind. It has been neglected for a long time. But now that it has been devolved to the county government, improvements have already started. We have begun by streamlining the personnel. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are now having very good personnel running the hospital. We have already managed to acquire modern patient monitor, monitor, monitoring machines, state-of-the-art. We have already uh, negotiated for very expensive uh, machine called MRI, which costs 100 million, which will be sponsored by the national government. And uh, it's coming from China. Uh, we are going to purchase CT scans mm -hmm. with, uh, with our funds. We are going to purchase dialysis machines, five of them. So we are, we are on the move. So we gave promises to buy these equipment which have not been bought for the last 30 years mm -hmm. and we are going to have all of them and by, and when are these by December. When are these changes likely to be seen by December? Some, already, okay. uh, some of the equipment are already in place, mm -hmm. like the patient's monitoring machines, state of the art. Okay. The MRI, which is very, very expensive indeed, will be available next month. Mm -hmm. the, the CT scans, will also be available by either end of this month or beginning of next month. Mm -hmm. And let's move over to water and electricity, which still remains a major challenge, particularly in areas like Mbere, uh, people writing in and saying that mm -hmm. the county has all seven hydro power dams, the seven forks dams, but there still seems to be a challenge with electricity and even with water in parts of the county. That's true. Um, some of the dams are in Embu, three are entirely in Embu, the others we share with Machakos, and um, we produce over 80% of hydropower mm -hmm. between us and Machakos counties, especially Embu. And uh, we have already told uh, Kenyan and Kenya Power that we must now have our share. So we are jointly working together with my neighbors, neighboring governors, to ensure that our loyalties will also ensure that we provide power to our people because we are the owners of the dams. And of course, the question that people ask is, yes, uh, of course, these, these concerns have been raised and you are aware that, that, that there are these existing challenges, but when are people expecting to see change? 
we are beginning to connect power already uh, to various homes and that exercise has started already mm -hmm. but we need to accelerate the process absolutely okay for water we are blessed with a lot of uh, rivers are uh, many rivers in the county and we have major major plans for water mm -hmm. uh, because it's one of us our natural resources and the land also is plenty we are going to maximize on this we are going the the chinese way where we are not going to allow our water to all disappear in the indian ocean without creating dams mm -hmm. so we have a plan for three dams in the county which will take care of all our water consumption needs and irrigation and of course uh, you are aware uh, Governor Wambora, that uh, governors have come under fire uh, from the people of Kenya over recent weeks. And one of the concerns here regarding you particularly is uh, what has been termed as indiscriminate sackings. And I'll read this, I'll direct this question to you. For instance, you fired the Embu County Interim Secretary over what he termed as mysterious circumstances. Plus, the High Court in Embu has mm. barred you from appointing a new county public service boss until a case filed by the former boss Njeru Gataria who was sacked is heard and determined. Perhaps just respond to this because mm. it's alleged that you're quick to sack persons who do not bow to pressure Rydian, uh, from you. Ridian, I think this is um, a storm in a teacup. It's no big issue. The expectations by the people for governors are very high and we must deliver. We must make sure everybody in the county is working. There is no compromise. We are not going to work like county councils or municipal councils. That cannot happen. There is no governor who accept that. Let's start with the first case. The interim secretary was not a permanent employee. And we just asked the transition authority to take him back to where he came from so that we can employ a full-time uh, county secretary who is now in place, embroiled by the new board. That leads me to the second issue of uh, <coughs> Gateria, who under applied for the post of a chairman. Gateria has never been a chairman of the board. He applied, we recommended him to the county assembly. He was uh, vetted, approved, then he brought problems of wanting additional pay because he was working in the private sector, he wanted more money than we can do, we can pay, mm -hmm. and we, we don't uh, determine the salaries. That's a portfolio of uh, salaries and the remuneration commission. So what happened, here is a person who has never been appointed, he has no letter of appointment, he has never been gazetted, he has never been a chairman. We have an acting chair, the board is working perfectly, he's trying to interfere with them. They have already employed several people, including my, my director of communication, mm -hmm. and they are now going to recruit Chief officers next so week. You stand so nothing, nothing has been stopped by the high, by the court. Mm -hmm. and things are moving very smoothly at the speed at which the people expected. So you stand by your decision. We are to moving with the speed, right. and the people are happy. But uh, political leaders in the county, though, have accused you of favoring your home region and not sharing county jobs across the no, constituencies. No, 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 no. Is this correct? Absolutely not correct. Mm -hmm. I come from Lenyenge's sub county. Manyata has got the biggest number of employees in the count, uh, county government because they are the most, they are the majority. Lunyeje is number two in terms of population. So it follows. Then Bere South, Bere, Bere South is number three in terms of population. So they have proportionate uh, level of employment. And, uh, and then, of course, we have Bere North, which has the least population, mm -hmm. one quarter of, say, Manyata and Lunyeje. So we are very proportionate. People are not complaining. Mm -hmm. There's a few discontented individuals. Okay, which, yeah, which is expected, of course. And, of course, Embu is the first county to implement a talent academy project. Absolutely. Um, uh, we'd like to hear more on this, uh, the education, um, ed education in Embu particularly, uh, um, you know, concerns over, you know, some students um, becoming border border operators or some even opting uh, to, you know, uh, use Mira. So a lot of concerns coming mm. um, uh, regarding talent management and not just in Embu, but across the country. But you are the first county to implement a talent academy Absolutely. project, which is an ambitious project. Just share it briefly is. on this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is one way to show that we didn't want to create employment and create wealth. 
and especially among the youth who are the most unemployed. Mm -hmm. So what we have done, we have already uh, acquired the land. We have a building which we are going to begin rehabilitating from this month. We have already started identifying the talent in the music, in the movie acting, in uh, football, in uh, uh, athletics, and uh, we are already uh, partnering with UNICEF. And we have already taken off and we are going to establish studios for music, for recording music, studios for movie acting. We are raring to go. Mm -hmm. That's why we need very hardworking uh, public servant in the county. And, and you've previously been quoted as saying you're working on ensuring your county does not depend on financial assistance from the national government. So what plans do you have Great. to improve revenue collection Great in plans. your county? Great plans. Embo the land of opportunities as a lot of uh, resources and we are going to mobilize these resources both in Embu and outside. The, uh, inside Embu, we are going to raise more revenue through e-revenue. We have already we are going to partner with Equity Bank. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who won the, the tender for e-revenue. We expect to not just double our revenue, but to quadruple our revenue uh, from 200 million to 1 billion. And that's not the beginning, that's just the beginning. We, we, we want to grow further and further. We are taking the Malaysian model where most of the funds come from investment. That's the second strategy we are going to take. We are going to invest in macadamia, we are going to invest in tea, we are going to invest in coffee, so that the county government can also make money. Most of our money will come from investment. Mm -hmm. That's one way we are going to raise a lot of funds. Okay, so Number three, mm -hmm. We are now mobilizing resources from without the county. We are going to have an investors conference on Friday the 11th and Saturday the 12th of this month, which is next week. We are busy uh, answering inquiries from the investors. We have already gotten over 100 investors from Embu, from Kenya, from uh, uh, Middle East, from uh, Europe, from America, and we are going to to ma amass more wealth, more funds than even uh, Megori County. So as we, wind, as we wind up, uh, Martin, what do the people of Embu expect to see in terms of a difference in the county uh, under your leadership? Very simple, the vision. My vision of Embu County is very simple. A prosperous county with equal opportunities for all not only the Embu residents, but also for investors and for our visitors. Right, thank you, Martin Wambora, thank Governor you. Embu County, mm -hmm. on the governor's seat tonight. He has um, addressed issues uh, that you have forwarded to us tonight. Thank you so much uh, for staying with us on Citizen Weekend. And as we continue with the day's news, about 20 families in Nairobi's East Lee estate have been forced to relocate after their houses were flooded with sewage. Brenda Cheriot has the details.